Oh, hi there. Uh, Today during the show, we got on the topic of bank robbery somehow, and I got a call from a guy who actually robbed a bank and did time. All right, Kenny, New Haven, what's happening, Kenny? Kenny. All right, so I was a Division II college baseball player, and I just want to tell you guys, there is motives behind these bank robberies. I actually robbed a bank myself in 2012. I had labrum surgery on my arm, and that was in the middle of the opioid epidemic. So I get a guy from Bridgeport who was selling me my pills at the time. And if you guys know Bridgeport, that's not the best area. And he came to my house, and I was not home. And he threatened my little brothers, who were 10 and 8 years old at the time. So I probably am the dumbest bank robber ever and the most meek. I wrote a note. I said, sorry, thank you, and please, all in the same note. The lady still handed over the money, the exact money I told her I needed. I paid back the bank robber. Uh, I got caught within five minutes. I did it a quarter mile from, the, uh, from my house. Um, these were <laughs> the police department that, that um, got me were kids that I grew up with, and I was probably considered the dumbest and the meekest bank robber of all time. <laughs> so, but, so- so wait, Kenny. You, you so yep. explain the beginning part of this again. So there were you 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 had He's to drug do, right. You had to you went and got I this had, money because yeah, you were addicted I, to pills. My sophomore year of college, I, I tore my labrum, and the doctor put me on pain pills. Right, and uh, yeah, you got addicted to pills, and then I you, got addicted. I got addicted to pills. The uh, addiction progressed from there, and um, and so then when the addiction progressed from there, I was going into Bridgeport to to get to get the harder stuff get heroin because it was cheaper than the pills that i couldn't afford anymore yeah and i was still playing at the time and i was still playing at an all-american level and this was all going on no one knew it was behind everyone's back but the, the guy was coming to my house that was you know i gave gave him my address and um, yeah and uh oh, Kenny, are you where are you where are you now in your life is this are your you, one phone call I'm, that I'm, you get <laughs> <laughs> yeah what's good where are I'm you? Seven year, I'm seven years clean, and I'm teaching baseball right now, All actually. Right. All right. And I'm, awesome. going to get, I'm getting my master's degree in, at Fordham. And um, the funny thing is I was wearing – I'm a huge, huge diehard Mets fan, and I was wearing a Phillies cap just because in case I got <laughs> caught, I wanted to represent the Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just Kenny. wanted to tell you that. Oh, uh, so you guys were talking about. No, that. I, I hear you, man. I mean, I guess it's good that you can that everything's good with you now, and you can go back and you can laugh about this dark time in your life. But so yeah. you went to the bank a quarter mile from your house. You yeah, you I, hand I, wrote a note and, and hand wrote. Well, I typed the note, duct tape, duct tape my license plate. Uh, but like, I'm a quarter quarter mile from my house. Very, very, very small town. You know, the cops know my car. Uh, within five minutes, they were back at my house. Ugh. I said I was pretending to sleep, but they, they knew all. <laughs> pretending to sleep? <laughs> then I actually got a call from the cop who arrested the bank robber who called the show earlier. What are the chances they were both listening this morning? Brian in Connecticut joins us. Hello, Brian. Good morning. How you doing, man? So you arrested that last guy that we had on? I will never forget that as long as I live. As soon as you started telling the story. I, it stopped me in my tracks. I'm tired now, but yeah, I was actually there that morning. Wow! So well, this... I'll tell you what, how uh, you know how uh, long did it take you to figure out who the idiot was that uh, did the robbery? Well, he had uh, let's just say a distinctive vehicle. Okay. And we had dealt with him a couple of times over the years because he had a problem, and he's never a violent guy. He was cooperative with us, but this bank called like right after they opened. And they said, oh, we just got robbed, or we don't weapon or anything. And they gave a description, and we were like, no way. And it's, it is literally like a quarter mile, maybe a, yeah, about a quarter mile from his house. And we were pulling up, and the garage was still closing. Like, they just got robbed. <laughs> and, and, and we were like, I mean, this is what was I looked at the other officer who was there. I was like, is he kidding? <laughs> and uh, it was, he it, it was like, the robbery took place. And the whole thing was over in like five minutes. Wow, that's it, unbelievable. It, it was. It was. I will never. I've told that story a million times. I'll never forget. And he's such, he, is, he really is a good guy. So talented, and really characterizes what path you know this whole thing can take people. And it was just terrible. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Was he uh, telling the truth, or he said he was pretending to sleep when you guys went in there? Yeah. He, he had like a. a as I recall, he had like a basement bedroom. He bolted in the house. And, you know, it didn't take long. And, and again, you know, once he's called on staff, he was cooperative. And he really, 
I, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I haven't him in a long time. Like I said, I'm retired now, but um, I, hope, I hope that he ended up on a decent path. But that was that was just one of the we laughed all day. It was amazing. <laughs> well, Brian, great work, man. Thanks for checking in and uh, enjoy your retirement. I'm sure that you are. Great talking to you guys. Take care. All right, see you. I mean, that? it's got to be a great story for him to tell, right? <laughs> I know, of course. The other guy, well, it's a well, good he story told it now. Too. I mean, right. it's, a, it's a good story on both sides because he seems like he has come out of it. He's figured it out. Yeah, that yeah. was the. Th- you know, it's almost like he needed that. You know, because he was on such a terrible path, they put him in jail. He was able to detox in jail, as miserable as that was for him. I would think, and he got real. out, and he's fine. He's clean now. And everything turned out great. The bank robber turned his life around. He's now teaching children, and the cop who arrested him has safely retired. 